one from Dart Com. Go ahead for Dart One. When a call for help comes into Dart, there's one thing that must check out before a mission is launched. We are having an alert from Setford. Um, just to give you a heads up if weather would be okay. We're in the air with pilot Douglas Moore as he scans the sky, assessing visibility and cloud levels. Both key factors in deciding whether the chopper will be able to fly to the patient in need. Moore isn't told the specifics of the call, normal procedure for Dartmouth-Hitchcock's advanced response team. We want them to make a decision, is it safe to do this mission, whether it's a six-year-old child or an 84-year-old adult. But while we're in the air, dispatchers get details on the seriousness of the call. A woman thrown from her car after a crash in Thetford needs to be flown to Dartmouth-Hitchcock for immediate medical attention. Uh, we should be able to make it to Thetford. The pilot's decision could mean life or death. A chopper lift saves precious minutes when getting that patient to high-quality hospital care. Our one is just off the hospital, uh, we'll be southbound along the river. Had this call come in just an hour earlier, it would have been a different story. And you said earlier you were called to Rutland and Burlington and that would have been a problem because of the low visibility? That's correct. Uh, when we got over into the Champlain uh, Valley, the visibility looked more like what we're seeing out here on the right and so it went down. Generally we're looking for about a thousand feet and three miles visibility. It goes up when we go up in the mountains across country we're looking for about 1505. Paul Austin, flying with DART for 15 years, says that visibility is needed to safely land the choppers and avoid major obstacles like mountains. But that's not always enough in New England. The problem you have with even this kind of visibility is, well, what's around the next corner? And in this business, you can't afford to go pick up the patient and then not get them where they need to go. Now, the hospital is investing half a million dollars to install a high-tech GPS system in its aircraft. Three zero zero one. It guides the choppers between hospitals, even in near-zero visibility under conditions known as instrument flight rules. It provides us the ability to pick up patients that we would not have normally been able to service. An extra 100 pickups and counting, says Director Kyle Madigan. The rollout of the system started six years ago. It's made up of predetermined routes that choppers can follow when they can't see. And the system is expanding. Two new GPS routes will be added this year. Existing routes also need annual maintenance. We have to refly the routes um, periodically to demonstrate that nothing has changed. The trees haven't grown up in that area. There's not a new tower. There's no new windmills. New night vision goggles have been added to the choppers too. Another tool making it easier to fly in bad weather. But there's one thing the DART helicopters still can't overcome, winter's chill. When things start freezing up, DART's two choppers are grounded because there's no de-icing equipment. During the winter months, an average of 25% of calls are turned down due to weather. Our first attempt to fly with DART was one of them. So when the chopper can't fly because of blowing snow and low clouds like today, a specialty ground unit is dispatched instead. These vehicles are staffed by the same crew that would arrive by chopper. It's the same level of care, it just takes longer to get there. And in some cases, that's time patients don't have. It underscores the importance of the dart choppers. Here in New England, it's a, it's a very valuable resource in that distances are so far, the uh, infrastructure for roadways can make it challenging. You can't get there from here is the old adage. In Lebanon, New Hampshire, I'm meteorologist Michael Page.